Morning, Noel. This is the Got Data video for the week beginning the 19th of August 2024. Just want to talk about the calendar, then we're going to talk about the FedWatch tool, and then we can examine the Got Data alongside the bubbles. So, in terms of the calendar, we've got the FOMC, so that's big, and we've got the Jackson Hole Symposium. So, uh, that's normally historically it's quite risk on. We looked at some data over the last three years. And of the three years, Illis is pumped. Uh, so it may happen again, but we'll have to wait and see. I think there's a lot of fear currently uh, in indices, so they're probably going to get punished. When I mean they're, they, I mean that's the retail guys. They're, they're very bearish right now, so we probably could potentially see more risk on and indices can continue to pump. Uh, so just be aware that we've got this FOMC and... Um, you know that's going to be we'll have to eye that and we've got this as well and then we've got lots of data on thursday and then it culminates with a uh, pal speech on friday and then um we'll just have to wait and see i can't imagine him changing his tone um because he's data dependent the inflation came down uh they're gonna cut with 100 percent probability but it's not going to be a big cut it's going to be a 25 basis point cut, which would be normal. And uh, this is the reason for the weakness in the dollar that we saw this week. It was absolutely rampant USD selling. And it's because of the 100% likelihood of a cut. It's either going to be a, a normal cut or a large cut. And before the CPI, it was 50-50. And now uh, they're, they're, they're um, forecasting there's a greater chance of a 25 basis point hike at 72%. There's a 27.5% chance of a large cut. That may change pending Powell, because he might be wanting to get, you know, to reduce that interest, interest rate cut. They might just want to signal that, you know, they've got the data that they wanted. It's very happy right now. Perhaps it's too high currently. So this may well, it will change pending the FOMC and it will change after the Powell speech. But at the moment, pending that the data doesn't come out uh, all skewy, we're going to cut with 100% probability. And that's going to put a lot of headwind on the USD. And that's the reason why you saw cross dollar really pump this week. And we had some good setups in Telegram and Discord as well. And you're looking to buy dips in an uptrend okay so this is the reason for that big pump on the pound usd uh i might be able to show you <laughs> um we talked about gold quite a bit i'll show you the uh pound move the oh well there's lots of stuff here there basically so we're looking to buy dips but we're looking to buy liquidity and these are stop loss clusters. So be sure to get the SLC indicator. And so that was a really good trade if you called it. So it was like a movement up, elevated down, and it created a lot of fear. And the reason for that is that I think they do it as a scare tactic. And it's actually a liquidity grab. And you're looking to buy in an uptrend. So currently on that hourly view, we're going sideways. But we have to remember to zoom out onto H4 or daily. If you come to the daily, we are trending higher. So you're looking to buy dips in an uptrend. Okay. So that's that being said. So hopefully that's a good demo. And um, that's the reason for the dollar weakness. And then so what we'll do, look at the bubbles now. Dollar is weak with CAD. Yen is weak and Swiss is weak. So we've got the safe havens in speech marks are in the sell area. And we've got the risky currencies down here. The Euro, Pound, Aussie and Kiwi are by. And also gold's down here as well, 34%. Uh, so they're actually, um, they're quite short. <laughs> and you'd think after hitting an all-time high, you'd think the gold bubble is going to move. If that bubble doesn't move, it tells us that they're holding short. If they hold short, we'll continue higher. Okay, so it's really, really important. So let's come to the... Um, download. Maybe you're going to come to Discord and you're going to click that file, okay? And it's in the COT report here in Discord. So everyone's got access to that as long as you are a bulletin member or above, okay? 
so we can close that Discord down. And you're going to come to your File Explorer, right-click, Properties, and then we're going to unblock, Apply. Okay, double-click. We're going to still have to unlock it again, but we just have to make sure we do it uh, at this point in the process. So there's the Enable Content. Okay, so we're going to come to the... No, not that one. Chart page. There we go. And uh, so, yeah, we can see the euro is stronger than the dollar still. Uh, move chart, and we'll call it net non comms, and we can start working with the data. So, what we could probably do actually, we could do this so we can, you know, look at how the retail sentiment are positioned for the week, we can see how the banks are positioned. Know, to start the, the week. Okay, so we've got the euro being stronger than the dollar. That makes sense. Euro is stronger than the dollar. So that's fine. So we can add... Oh, yeah, I might have better say that. I didn't know if it was going to let me click that. Uh, yen. Wow. Wow. Okay. Um, the yen is now stronger than the USD, uh, which makes sense there. The yen really pumped. But the yen is now stronger than the dollar, which is... I didn't think we were going to see that so quick. 23,000, 18,000. So uh, dollar yen should fall. Okay, so should in speech marks. Don't put your house on it. Um, but from a COP perspective, the dollar yen can weaken. Okay, and we see the dollar is weaker than the yen. I mean, they're both sell, admittedly, but they're more long dollar than they are on the yen. So dollar is more of a sell than the yen. Okay, so that... That makes sense, and the euro USD makes sense. So let's take the euro off, and we know that Aussie is by. It's down here. It's been hidden. It's down here. There, this Aussie. Okay, so we are by. So let's see how the banks are positioned for Aussie. Uh, they had sold Aussie from the week prior. Okay, so that might be one to be wary of. Still minus. Minus 11,000, okay? So that's a little bit of discrepancy. So whether or not the retail will, uh, the retail sentiment, the bubbles will play out, uh, because if you think about it, we are risk on, and so Aussie could appreciate. So I'm not sure about that, so we'll have to wait and see. So that would be an AJ sell, okay? So that might make, you know, that particular combination a little bit tricky. So Aussie off, pound on, we know pounds are buy, Oh, let's put pound on. Look at that big surge in the yen. That's ridiculous, isn't it? Pound on. Pound has fallen. But we have to remember we are positive. Uh, but we have had that reaction off there. And, um, you know, like I say, we are still positive. But I'd imagine this probably should tick higher. Uh, you know, we've had lots of good UK data out last week. And don't forget this data is from Tuesday as well. So... Uh, we are positive, but ideally you'd want that to like have a little tick higher. Um, so, you know, be a little bit careful there. If that if they sell off the pound, we're going to get the pound yen uh, signal to sell. So pound it off. CAD on. CAD is weak, so that should be falling. Uh, we, we were falling, and it sort of stopped its free fall ever so slightly, but we're very, very weak. 196,000 minus... Minus 179,000. So it's very, very weak. Uh, whether or not it will continue, it may do. We'll have to wait and see. We know that CAD is the weakest on the bubble, so we could probably fall. Uh, there's the CAD yen sell set up there, about there uh, two weeks ago. Okay, CAD off. Uh, gold on. Gold is obviously all time high, and so they've added long. Um, so minus 238. Two minus two, what am I saying? Minus <laughs> plus 238,000 to 267,000, 238 to 267. So they really added long and uh, 274. We still got that resistance, but we did break above it, so uh, we have like penetrated that resistance. So that might be not applicable anymore because of this. So we could, we could theoretically continue higher. Remember what I said about the gold bubble. If that doesn't move tomorrow, it tells us that the herd, the, the holding short. 
and if they hold short it kind of tells us that they're not, they're not using stop losses and if they're not using stop losses price may have to continue and gravitate higher in order to get them out and the only way that they're going to get out is by margin call so it depends on the majority's uh, capital and if they've got huge capital without stop loss it's going to go and just destroy them okay so be really really careful with that okay and remember to trade the trend it's really really important because you could like say oh we could be topping out i'll sell it with a stop at the high that's what everyone's doing because the the majority are short so they're going to want to sell it they don't want to get out at a loss they want to get out at a break break even all right so that's what they'll do. The herd will see an uptrend and then but they'll they'll fade it, they'll sell it with a stop at the recent swing high. Price will go up to that swing high, like we saw in um Telegram. You know, you know, we're gonna probably gravitate up here, okay? Because that's the old stop loss cluster, the old stop loss cluster, the old stop loss cluster is going up to take liquidity, okay? And it's probably gonna do it again. So be be careful, okay. Uh, gold off and then we're going to wrap up the video and we're going to look at the New Zealand dollar and New Zealand dollar is slightly sideways although it's kind of hard to see but we have gone just sideways there so New Zealand dollar is actually the strongest <laughs> which is off note so you could look for Kiwi CAD and uh, I know it did quite well last week which we can see on the Kiwi scores and uh Kiwi CAD, yeah, see we had a, a good day on Friday and that was based on the bubbles, right? So this is how you can use it. You're looking for buying and then you're selling the bubble, right? So hopefully that's clear. And then it's a good demonstration how to use the sheet to make money because you're just looking at something down here and you're looking at something up there and then you're going to exploit that, that, you know, the retail. And also you're going to exploit that distance because they're heavily short heavily long what's going to happen you know so uh that's the reason for the nc long okay and uh take that off and put the swiss franc on not the rand swiss franc and uh it's gone higher which is a discrepancy there with the swiss franc because they're long and the banks have started to buy so Swiss could be a bit tricky. So I'll wrap up now. It's quite a long video because we covered the calendar. We covered the Fed watch tool. We also covered the probability of this moving. Um, I can't see a pause or a hold being penciled in, but maybe Powell's going to be a little bit wary. Maybe, maybe this is going to greatly change by Friday. So if it does, we'll see some dollar strength. All right. So if this changes dramatically, we'll see a resurgence on the USD, all right? So be careful, and then I'll wrap up now. And if you wanna get access to the bubbles, just let me know, and I'll, I'll send you some documents, and then you can join, and then you can see how we can use the bubbles to make profit as well. So have a great day, and I'll speak to you guys tomorrow.